The next scenario is you suddenly get a huge blast of critical reviews. And just so everyone's aware here, a critical review defined by Amazon is a, a written one, two, or three star review. All right. So you've got ratings. If you look at your reviews, it'll say 800 ratings, 220 with reviews. So those are ones that are written, right? And a critical is a one, two, or three star. So a three star, uh, it appears, is not just neutral to Amazon. It's actually bad, right? So at least in reviews. Now, if you were talking about seller feedback, uh, a three star is considered neutral. And I don't know why there's a difference between those, but there is. So uh, we're going to look at these. We're going to be looking for spikes. Let's say on average, an ASIN gets one, one, one critical review per day. And suddenly there's 15, 12, and nine. And it goes back down to one a day. Well, that, there's a, that's a huge anomaly, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to look into those buyer accounts and go, all right, what, what happened, right? And if we find that those buyer accounts, that these are, that they are using reviews that are very similar or even the same, or they're using the same pictures or the same videos, or it's the only review these accounts have ever done, we're going to roll all of those buyer accounts into a single escalation case with Amazon. Look, say Amazon, look, we found evidence of what we are con completely certain is fraudulent activity, which is obviously illegal on amazon.com. Please investigate this. And we've gotten at up to 130, some, 137 or something reviews removed once on one of those escalation cases. Wow. Yeah. That's such a big deal. Okay, yep. so uh, so you're looking at the the profile of the reviewer, and do, yeah. you are seeing how many critical reviews that person left all, well, over time, and if you see a spike, that usually indicates something abusive. We're looking for spikes on your ASIN. On on our ASIN. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll go and look at those reviewers. Now we'll also, that's not the only time we'll look at the reviewer or or the buyer account. If if the review left is like, especially people that have been selling for a long time, like you can look at a review like, eh, something's fishy about that, right? So we know, we know what those reviews look like because we know what your product is. And if, and we know what it looks like also if they put a picture of a different product. That happens all the time with fraudulent stuff. They'll put something completely different in there uh, or a similar but different product, right? And leave a critical review. So what we'll do in those cases, we're still going to go investigate those buyer accounts. And then what we're looking for is, let's say, let's just say vitamin C, right? Uh, I sell vitamin C. There's a fishy review. It says, buyer beware, do not buy. Uh, you know, this gave me hives and also I was unable to eat for 42 days after taking it, right? Like, all right, that's a wild claim right mm. off the bat, right? For simple vitamin C. So we go look at the account and we go, oh, look, this guy's done three reviews, all one star on different vitamin Cs. And look at this one. There's a vitamin C that has a five star. And it's just raving about how great it is and it changed their life and blah, 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 blah. Really suspicious, right? So mm -hmm. we're going we're gonna to go after that account and, and take that to Amazon and say, hey, look, we believe this is a fraudulent account. There's, oh, I'll give you another one. That, so what, what you'll often find is that the claims will be very similar across all of the critical reviews. Gave me hives, couldn't eat for 43 days, right? They'll change it up a little bit, but it'll have given them hives and they couldn't eat for 43 days, right? Another one is, and this, this was actually, this is a great tactic, if I'm being honest. We found an account where somebody would leave, it was one, it was a couple of buyer accounts, five-star reviews on their competitor. Great product, but I prefer this product and put in the full brand name of the competitor with a link to that product in the review, which interestingly is okay. You cannot put links in reviews. That's all what we all know, right? Mm -hmm. You cannot put links off Amazon. 
in reviews, but you can put a link to another product in a review, it seems. Oh. So, yeah. So he also put the link to his product in there. So what do you get from that? You're getting backlinks on other on your competitor pages. You're getting backlinks to your own review. He did this to a ton of products that were similar to his. Also, by the way, in the supplement space. So it was it was good. So that our customer reached out to us and said, hey, uh, can you get rid of five stars? I'm like, why? And he sent the review. I'm like, oh my God, what a good tactic. It's a five star. Who, who really looks deep into five stars, right? You look deep into one, twos, and threes, ones and twos for sure, but five stars? And this guy had like 15 five stars on similar products with almost the same review, of course, different, but the link to the competitor product and so on. So these, I mean, it's like the, the, the old days of SEO. I, I, you know, I think most Amazon sellers understand search engine optimization at this point. Amazon is a search engine. You do want to optimize your, your listings, right? So it's like optimizing your web pages. And with every new update that Penguin, uh, that, that uh, Google would come out with, like Penguin this or Donut Hole or whatever the, the latest one was, yeah. people, people figure out how to game it, right? I just had an idea as you were oh, talking. I tell mean, me. that's a brilliant move. It Five is. Star review that has the competitor link. 